Welcome back to our series on skin cancer awareness. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service, your family and consumer science agent. So, so far we've looked at the major types of skin cancer and we've talked a little bit about some of the risk factors and doing a self exam to try to catch and see those things early. What are some other preventative things that we can look at? So today we're gonna to try to understand a little bit more about sun exposure and start thinking about those steps we can take to minimize that. So skin cancer is the most common type of cancer in the United States. Information for this presentation comes from our extension health specialist with New Mexico State University, Sonia Kukel. There is a complete guide uh, I'm just giving you snippets of the information, but this is extension guide I-106 that you can actually download or you can contact the Curry County Extension Office and we'd be glad to provide you a hard copy. We know cancer develops from a malfunction within the cells. An overexposure to the sun's ultraviolet rays or what we'll talk about as UV rays damages skin cells and so that's why it's the leading cause of skin cancer. So it's critically important to protect yourself from increasing exposure to the sun, because that's what's gonna help us minimize some of those risk factors related to skin cancer. So New Mexico, just the nature of our climate and the state that we're in, has an increased exposure to UV rays. We have high elevations, we have clear skies, uh, we have high reflective desert. And so our year round warm climate helps increase how much time we're out there and really being exposed to the sun. So, um, and People wear less clothing when it's warm outside. And so we expose more parts of our skin. On a midsummer day, a fair skinned person can get sunburned within nine minutes. Nine minutes, y'all. So there are steps you can take to protect yourself from the sun's UV rays. Um, and the first one is always use sunblock or a broad spectrum sunscreen. And this, we think about, oh, we got to make sure the kids have their sunscreen on and I do that great. And then I'm the one that ends up sunburned. So particularly as we're parents or even just as we're aging, but we like to go out and we do our gardening, or maybe we are a producer and we have to be out on the farm, on the tractor. We need to be aware of having our sunscreen uh, or our sunblock so that we are minimizing that overexposure to the sun's rate. So I used a couple different terms there and we don't always make all the distinctions that we probably should, uh, but the first thing is sunblock. Now we use these terms interchangeably and they're really not. Sunblock is its own thing. Sunblock are products that work by reflecting the sun's rays uh, and so it blocks them from reaching your skin at all. This is what keeps it from getting to you. Zinc oxide, we all remember the, you know, the white noses down at the beach and uh, trying to keep that off, or titanium dioxide. These are your most common types of sun block. They're highly effective in protecting against sunburn and skin cancer. But remember, these are your products. They're thicker. They're going to appear more white or some other color on the skin. I know I saw some now that they, you can get like purple and different colors for the kids to wear to the pool because that's big fun. Um, but this is your most extreme blocking those UV rays option is sun block. What we tend to be more familiar with are these broad spectrum sunscreens. Now this is the regular old sunscreen that you purchase at the store. You can rub it on a lotion. Now they have some that sprays. However you choose to apply it, there's some important key things to remember about sunscreen. First and foremost, you need to have at least a 30 SPF. SPF is the percentage of those UV rays that it's gonna block and keep off of you. Uh, now most of us think, oh, well, if I uh, get 30, that's good, but if I get 50, that's better and I can put it on once and go throughout the day. And that's not what the SPF affects. So when we talk about um, the SPF, and you're going to know that from the label, it's going to tell you on the label what their ranking, what their rating is, how high and what it's going to block. The 30 lasts the same amount of time as one with a lower SPF or a higher SPF. So when you purchase the 50, you still need to reapply it as often as possible. Um, sometimes a higher SPF may cost more. It may be more expensive. And depending on your skin type and what type of recommendations you've gotten from your medical, um, your medical providers, that may be an unnecessary expense for you. That's something that you can read the labels 
get the information and figure that out. But the main thing to understand is just because that SPF is higher doesn't mean you get to stay in the sun longer. That's not what it does. So that being said, knowing we need at least 30 SPF in our sunscreen, what are the other things we need to consider in looking at sunscreens and being more preventative in getting that cell damage from the sun? So first of all, you know, your sunscreens are less visible on your skin than a sunblock. They usually rub in, they go on clear, however that happens to work. You need to apply a generous amount. So that's about one ounce, enough to fill a shot glass. Okay, not just a couple dabs on your fingers, enough to fill a shot glass. And you may need more or a little less depending on how big you are and how much skin is actually exposed. So we need to apply those generous amounts often. Generally, sunscreen ingredients break down after several hours of sunlight exposure. Sunscreens are not waterproof or sweatproof. Even when they say that, understand it may cut down on some of that, but it's not completely waterproof. And if you're sweating, it's still running off all of that sunscreen. So if you're swimming or you're doing other exercise where you're getting sweaty, you need to be sure that you're reapplying your sunscreen often. And even when it's cloudy, those UV rays are getting through. So you need to be sure that you use your sunscreen when you're going to be outdoors, even on a cloudy day. Here's one that trips me up all the time because I buy stuff and I put it in the cabinet and then I don't think about it or I don't grab it until I need it. Or even, you know, we go to horse shows and things and we carry stuff in the horse trailer. And so you need to make sure that that sunscreen is not expired. They're going to have an expiration date on them, just like when we purchase food. It's going to tell you, it's going to be stamped on that container. If there's no date, then you want to put a permanent marker the month and the year that you buy it. Uh, but most, they should have a date on them somewhere. Sometimes it's just hard to find, or if it's something you've had a while, it might have rubbed off. Uh, if it's stored at room temperature, it's good usually up to three years after you purchase it. Uh, but if it's expired or it's been exposed to high temperatures, it's going to lose its effectiveness. So those the stuff that's in it that provides that SPF and prevents that UV rays from getting through and being harmful on your skin isn't going to be there anymore when it's expired or like I said, when it's gotten too hot. So we need to be very aware of that, that just because we're using sunscreen doesn't always mean that it's effective. Also, not just the sunscreen on the other parts of your body, but your lip balms, your chapsticks, things that you're putting on your lips should contain an SPF. Again, that's going to tell you that on the label. There's all these cute little fun flavored ones that are great for moisturizing your lips. You know, get them in our, put them in the stockings for Christmas, all of that cute stuff, but doesn't necessarily have the SPF that's going to help protect this delicate skin that makes up your lips from the sun. And some cosmetics also will contain that skin, sunscreen. So those are things you need to check those product labels. And then just remember, even most cosmetics that you're putting on your face, they're going to be about 15, which is great, but not as good as 30. So you may need your sunscreen along with your cosmetics if you're going to be outside for any length of time and exposed to the sun. So remember, you can make the determination for what's right for you and your family related to sunblocks and sunscreens. Visit with your medical providers. The information I'm providing to you is just summary information for the general public meant to be educational and does not take the place of having these conversations with and getting medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment related to skin cancer and the products you use to help work toward preventing that. This has been the third installment of our Skin Cancer Awareness Series. I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service. I hope you'll come back next time. We're going to talk a little bit more about over and above sunscreens and sunblocks. What are some of the things you can do to minimize overexposure to the sun and help take preventative measures related to skin cancer? Thank you.